to keep working it in there. Take that excess material away. Still gotta work this one a little bit more. And you'll notice with the eraser you can actually rotate the eye, you can rotate it uh, to get the right up and down position and the right front and back position. Remove all that excess at the front so you can see that front corner. You're not going to have a lot of material in that front corner when you're done. getting pretty close there now. I'll get these finished up where they need and then uh, then we'll come back here in a minute. So now we have the two eyes in and I'm pretty happy with the depth of those eyes. Like I said you should be able to see some of the pupil in that front uh, just behind the front corner of the eye. Um, maybe a third of that pupil or 20 percent of that pupil should be visible. Try to get them uh, in there um, where you want them and uh, I know it's it's subtle hard for new new people uh, just doing this for the first few times to uh, be able to see when an eye is actually rotated correctly uh, slightly forward slightly down so um, the uh, the downward or flat flatness of the eye is visible in this view and then if you uh, hold the bird and look at it from the top you can actually see whether or not the eye is uh, angled forward and uh, and then we'll move on. The next step is to take a small amount of the clay and um, I, I roll it out into a ribbon so uh, a fine ribbon you might want to make sure your fingers a little bit wet so it doesn't uh, stick to your hands or your fingers but I roll it out into a, into a little snake just uh, enough material to fill in that area above and below the eye and create and create the eyelid and then um, I apply this in two pieces so I'll cut it with my knife and uh, pick it up and I place it on the eye on the top and the bottom of the eye usually I try to anchor it in some of the other clays because it, so it doesn't move around and then use my dental tool to help place it this is when this is when it actually starts to look like an eye when you actually start to fill that area in around the eye. You just want to push it down, push it down a little bit and make sure that it's uh, stuck to the other clay and then do the same thing with the top. Place that on there. I use the, the tools to shape it around the eye, anchoring it at the front corner and moving it around. I mean, you have to have an idea of how big your eye opening is going to be in order to do this. And uh, I mean, I know from doing it and from the shape or size of the glass eye that I've got about uh, when you get it right. But for this 10 millimeter eye, I actually measured uh, the visible portion of the eye, and it should be about eight and a half millimeters or so. So I place that in a ring around the eye and kind of simulate the shape that I'm after. And then the next step is to start pushing that in where you want it. So I usually start in the front corner of the eye and I actually uh, try to feather off the top of the ribbon into the wood around the eye, wet the tool, wet the tool and feather that off around we'll be taking some of this away but if you if you've carved the wood correctly in that there really shouldn't be too much of a build up there like that 
and then do the same thing around the bottom just try to feather it off and anchor it to the wood so we get that where we want it and now we're actually gonna we're gonna take away most of it at the front corner of the eye so I'm going to uh, try to do it so you can see it but I that front corner of the eye where we carved it in and where we've put the clay in that that's gonna be really the key part for the whole eye that should be opened up and anchored in underneath with uh, the lid on the top just kind of sticking up above above that so I'm just going to push that down around the eye see what that looks like it's going to take me quite a few steps here I'm just trying to it's hard for me to do it so that you can see it on the on the on the video I don't really want a big pile of clay built up in front of the eye. So then I use my exacto and I cut some of that material away. And then create the shape of the bottom lid. Just cut away a little of that material. I'll show you here in a second. So I'm trying to remove a little bit of material there now to shape that bottom, that bottom lid. Should be uh, wetting your tools with a little bit of water and then you can start shaping it a bit more with the tool. I don't know about you, but I always find the when you're looking at the head, the front corner is going to be lower than the back corner of the eye. It's not really round. There's a front and a back corner usually to these things. And um, so you want to make sure that you're kind of coming uphill uh, to get that. Use your knife. Just help you shape that. So now it starts to look more like an eye. And... Uh, something more natural do the same thing with the top take away a little excess material that you don't need use your paintbrush to get some stuff out of there. Where's my pen? Use my pen to clean up the front corner. And then the brush to remove any excess. We're getting there. I'll do a little more work and come back and explain what I've done. So I kept working the the bottom eyelid area to create that lid that moves from the bottom up just to give it that little bit of a lazy look. Um, use the paintbrush in that. Use the exacto knife to cut the the shape of that eyelid you want. It says it's a shallow curve there, so it's um, again it's not a big round. Uh, eye opening. It's a curved eye opening. I've brought the clay material right down to the wood at the front and right down to the wood at the back. There's really nothing that's uh, sticking up on these on these gunning birds anyway. For decoratives you might spend a little more time creating uh, uh, a nice little fleshy ring around the eye but for the uh, for the gunning decoys uh, we don't put that much detail into them. 
um, so right to the wood at the back and the front and then creating that that nice uh, flap uh, around the bottom and shaping the uh, the bottom eyelid I like to do the bottom first because um, it really starts to establish the look of the eye and then the the um, the top ring the way I do it is that it, it kind of sits up above um, the bottom ring at the front and the back so there's a little bit of a height difference there that I can work with so I might as well do the one that's underneath or on the bottom first so I'll do a little shaping on the top and then we'll we'll catch up on that so a few things uh, here so I've used my um, my exacto knife to open up the shape of the upper eyelid um, you can use the edge of your knife or your your dental tools wet and feather off the excess material off to the top wet your finger you can smooth that out around that area and then um, paying particular attention to the front corner and the back corner of the eye again you can see how the there's a, uh, a lower lid that's been created which uh, uh, is more pronounced here and then disappears the, the upper eye uh, area just overhanging just a little bit so this kind of goes right up to the front corner of the eye back in fairly deep almost uh, basically flush with the wood where you carved it and then um, do the same thing at the back it disappears off back to the carved wood surface with a little bit of the clay material hanging over at the top and that helps give you a little bit of a the back edge of the brow there around the eye and um, and then I use um, my little dental tool again and I come back and I just press in a little shaped uh, eye ring around the top there um, be very careful because as you press on it, it's probably closing up the eye uh, a bit as the material is still a bit soft so then um, then you use your you can use your wet paintbrush and you can pull pull that material back up and clean up clean up that eye use the wet brush there the wood swells up around there a bit with the water but you can clean that up after it's all cure you can sand that out and uh, and seal it up and you won't know any different but um, carefully use a wet paint brush um, you can use a little stiffer one than this if you want to move it around more I like this uh, number two round it's just a cheap uh, acrylic one and um, and I use that to help smooth out the clay and shape shape the eye I did the same thing on the other side so you can see uh, they're very similar the, the real trick is um, making sure you, you get the same sized opening, same shaped opening, and that you look like the same duck from one side to the other as opposed to, I've seen a lot of birds where you just, uh, you know, when I'm judging competitions, you see a bird that looks completely different from one side than the other, and, uh, and that's not good. So you really want to try to capture the same kind of a look uh, from one side to the other. I'll give you a little bit of a close up there and and a close up on this side I hope I hope that helps um, I tried to touch on most of the things I can think of here again look at it from the front make sure that the shape of the lid is uh, very similar from one side to the other same amount of eye exposed you can even measure it with your tools if you want to be really uh, precise in that but you get to a point where it just looks right, and I think that's when you uh, that's when you stop. If it has the the attitude that you're trying to capture, a little bit of a lazy look in this one, then uh, then I think you've got what you're after. So anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, short of demonstrating it right in front of you, it's uh, tried to do the best I can with the video. So if you have any comments or anything, uh, you can private message me on uh, Facebook uh, or uh, send me uh, send me a message message somehow I think my phone number is even in there somewhere but anyway hope that helps good luck